Training and development, it's a growth strategy, and it absolutely needs to be part of an organization strategy. Now more than ever, employees, they want to understand what's the company's purpose, what's my purpose, and what's that cross-section, and what are you going to do to develop me? Oh and God. if you can answer those questions, that's money. Welcome to the Optimized Workplace. Today, I welcome Christy Bach president of Know Your Talents, a premier management consulting partner working with leaders to enhance culture and optimize performance at every level. KYT's four guiding principles are helping businesses know, grow, and inspire their employees, helping them to get to the root of what their employees, what makes their employees tick, and giving them a voice in their organization, striving to cultivate strategic alignment. So welcome, Christy. Thank you, Fran. Thank you so much for having Uh, know your talents and myself on your podcast. Appreciate it. Absolutely. So you are the president of this thriving organization, and I'm sure it has lots of touch points and it touches people in so many different dynamic ways. Please tell us a little bit more about KYT, Know Your Talent. Yeah, thanks. Um, Gosh, we are a I like to say we're a 20-year-old startup, actually. (laughs) We started uh, the company 20 years ago, and we really just have grown and evolved. We started the company. um, My connection with the company is Lori Lori Corotini, who's our founder and one of our owners of LearnKey, which is our parent company. Um, She was my first leader when I fell into staffing uh, over, well, many decades ago. I'm not even going to say. So anyway, um, she started the company 20 years ago and really was coming at it from the perspective of when she started the company, it was um, with the intention to bring behavior to the recruiting space because so many companies get it right relative to recruiting, meaning they're looking for, you know, the right culture fit. They're looking for, they're looking at skills, experience, you know, um, you know, competencies, but that one piece was really missing, which was, you know, really predictability, you know, um, behavior is predictable. And while you can adapt it, it is very predictable and it's, and it's powerful information when you have, information and data relative to someone and how they're going to show up and how they communicate and lead and um, interact with other team members. So um, her original intention was to bring that into recruiting. Well, you know, literally within six months, she decided, never mind, I'm not even going to do the recruiting piece. I'm going to focus just on just on the behavior piece because it was It was um, just generating such fantastic outcomes for organizations. So what has happened over the years, probably within the last 10 years, it's it's really evolved. Our business has evolved into um, not only solving for and helping to drive a great culture, but then our our clients were asking and we saw the need um, as we get embedded. We have a... 85% retention rate with our clients, which in the consulting world is a little unheard of, uh, as you're probably aware of. So so it really began to evolve into, okay, well, let us dive in and help them with their um, annual strategy and, you know, bring that human capital and driving culture and driving performance into strategy. And then we, you know, brought another uh, component in, which is, you know, really understanding the overall health of your organization. You know, where are the risks and the gaps within the organization? Um, and, And then what are the action plans after that? And then, the big piece, which is, you know, development, um, you know, employees are, you know, and I saw that you've got a number of, of blog posts on development. One of the top reasons that employees are stepping out of organizations is they, they want an opportunity to grow and, and to develop, to be the best leader that they can be. And, and even if they're not in leadership, you know, what else can I do within the company that is going to, you know, meet that employees motivators, right. As well as impact the organization? What other skills can I learn? What other, you know, maybe it's stepping into a completely different cross-functional area. So so to say all that, that's really what what our business has, um, you know, really evolved to in bringing this fully aligned enterprise development solution. And so sometimes, you know, it's fully scalable. So we might engage just on one of those, you know, pillars, Um, or we might engage on all four, depending on, you know, the appetite of the, of the organization. Wow. That's a, that's a rich history. 
and a lot to unpack. <laughs> Certainly. Yes. <laughs> I, I love what you were saying though, around, you know, obviously you're, you, you have a startup mindset, even though you've been in the trenches for 20 years. And I think there's a lot to be said for that is that you're, you're always looking at how to, to make a new, how to innovate, mm-hmm. how to really look at things with a new eye and a fresh eye, because we can get so stuck into the, a rudimentary legacy way of doing things. And we see that obviously a lot at Aerobodies with some of the clients that um, that we are helped to or asked to help. But I, I want to dig a sure. little bit more into that because I think that that there's that we're in a really interesting inflection point, right? With, you know, coming back from the pandemic, employees are demanding more from their mm-hmm. employers in terms of what a work-life structure looks like. I want to work remotely. I want to have this hybrid. I want to have a different benefit structure that really benefits my well-being and my balance. And, you know, when I was looking at the bio for your organization and really, as you said, helping employers understand what makes employees tick and what helps them show up, where do you think we're headed? You know, all of that said, where do you think we're headed in 2023 when it comes to employee development and culture. Yeah, you know, and, and I think it just it just continues to align to individuals want to be seen, you know, and it really aligns with, you know, everything that's happening, you know, with diversity, equity, inclusion. It it aligns with some companies are still fully remote. Some companies are demanding comp- you know, employees to come back. A lot of companies are moving into a hybrid scenario with the fact that I don't know if you're seeing this brand, but literally we work with all different sizes of organizations, all different industries. Business is moving so quickly. And I can't believe it's February already, February, 2023. For anyone who's listening to this podcast in 2024, it's February, 2023. And it seems like we we're still in December. Like I can't believe we're here already. Right. Yes. 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 So, so to answer your question, I think business is moving as, as fast as it ever has, you know, for a number of different reasons. Um, you know, there's, there's more of a, of an opportunity for employers to really take time to understand what that employee's makeup is. And companies work so hard to attract and bring in that employee you know, you got to work really hard to retain them. And, you know, so there's no better way to do that than to really understand what does make your employees tick, you know, and, you know, part of the work that we do, you know, really follows every step of that employee life cycle, you know, and so, um, you know, incorporating behavior into recruiting, to onboarding, to, you know, um, that first week, that first six months, you know, those performance reviews to even sitting, you know, an employee out. It, it really is all about really understanding your employee because, you know, we we say this, one of my colleagues used this example and I thought it's so great. You know, if you're a parent, you know, um, I've got two children and they're the same, but they're very different. And so our our guiding principles were the same with our children, but the way that I had to show up and lead them, you know, as their mother um, was different for each one of them. And it's no different in in the corporate environment where, you know, leaders will just be so much more successful if they have the insight to understand really what, what, how does each one on their person, on their team communicate? You know, what's their, what's their project style? You know, what is their energy? You know, meaning, you know, how much bandwidth do they have? Yeah. Let me ask you a question around that. Cause I think that's a great point. You know, how does KYT keep that fresh, innovative, as you said, startup eye when it comes to that? I remember back in the day, you know, when we were going through uh, recruitment strategies in the nineties or early, the early two thousands, and we'd use the old application, right? People would kind of do a checklist that's now been automated and it's digitized, but how has that been um, innovated? You know, how do you all keep that fresher eye and that startup mentality when it comes to looking at behavior for employees? Yeah, and I I would say that, you know, technology is our friend, right? I mean, there's, it's all about AI and, you know, there's there's 148,000 logarithms literally that go into every single behavior assessment. We utilize a, 
a behavior platform called PDP. Um, it is not Know Your Talents. It's a you know 40 year old organization um, that's housed out of Colorado Springs, Colorado. That we've partnered with them for 20 years, and we've not found a better instrument. And so you know with that, it's you know technology is changing, and and you know AI is changing to the point that you know, we're able to pr- provide job models for, for organizations, meaning, you know, okay, you've got a high turnover position. Let's take a look at, you know, who are your top performers in, in that, in that um, position? And we're going to, we're going to create a job model, you know, based on that person's behavior survey and other information from the hiring leaders. And then, bring that into the recruiting cycle, right? And so, you know, what companies find is because you're leveraging, you know, this technology. Um, and again, it's a data point. It's not a yes or no, but it, what we have found and our clients have had huge success, you know, reducing turnovers from, you know, 83% to below 40% in some instances, you know, in very high turnover roles um, because they've identified from a behavior standpoint this is kind of the recipe for success of who is going to be successful stepping into this role from a behavior standpoint. And a leader then understands how to coach them, right? And how to align them to the outcomes that the person's wanting to drive and that the company is wanting to drive. That's fantastic. I love that. I love that. And I love the point that you made around AI, because I think that AI, even though it is is taking jobs, let's be honest, but it is Definitely right. delivering on its promise to help us with more predictable outcomes with regards to how right. we do some of this process improvement work. So when you talk about this this idea around the behavior of the employee, how far are you all able to drill in? And let me give you a scenario. So let's say you've got you know something that we see a lot in our work is you'll have um, a team of employees or even a you know it could be a, f- a whole organization is really going through some toxicity really going through some yes. major change management issues mm-hmm. and that really is trying to amp things up. We like to say, right, we design strategic yes. engagements to help people thrive. So they're really trying to find ways to uh, reignite the employees with the mission and the vision of the organization mm-hmm. and the culture. How do you then drill in with your behavioral tools in that way. So it's not just, I mean, once they're on board and they've been with the organization for a while, how does that look for KYT? Yeah, great question. You know, and it is all about aligning teams and then aligning teams to where the organization is wanting to drive to, you know? And so, you know, we find that there's a lot of organizations, exactly to your point, Fran, that are, you know, they're they're at a place that they've recognized, you know what, we want to drive a better culture. We want to drive better communication. We want to break down organizational silos, right? We want, you know, um, these, um, you know, cross-functional teams to really be aligned. And so, you know, a lot of the work that we do, it starts with that behavior survey, but then we leverage that behavior survey and um, really help teams identify it's the makeup of the team, you know? And so what happens is, and, and we all do this, right? You know, I happen to be a people person and I'm a pretty hard driving person, right? And so that's my behavior. Um, I've got people that sit on our team that are highly um, structured and are a little bit more introspective and private, and they need a lot of information to be set up for success, right? So I could create a narrative in my mind, you know, based on my interaction with them that, you know, gosh, you know what, we don't, we're we're miscommunicating or we're, we we don't really have quite the relationship, you know, that I would like us to have. And, and oftentimes that narrative that we're creating is incorrect. We're just receiving that person's behavior. So once you have an understanding, A, of full awareness of what your own behavior is, right, Um, and how you show up, and then couple that with the members that are sitting on your team, and it could be a leadership team, it could be, you know, just a functional team, to really understand, you know, the makeup of the team and Oftentimes you see a lot of aha moments happening, you know, when we do, you know, team workshops, right? People then, you know, the walls start coming down because people have an understanding of, oh, I was taking this personally. This is the way that this person is wired. They just need the appropriate amount of information because to them, they don't have all the information. 
it's really important for them to get it right. They're not going to, they're not going to move. They're not going to act on, you know, what, what I've asked them to act on. So, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you really just get to break down some of these barriers and it enhances um, communication. It reduces conflict and it just allows for an opportunity to be understood. And, and then, and then from there, you know, then you really can take it, you know, that we do a lot of work with teams that we can map teams behavior. Um, And so really insightful, because you can see, gosh, you know, how's, how's everybody on this team doing? How much energy did they have left to expend, you know, based on how they've had to shift their baby behavior, because the the, uh, PDP instrument shows how someone has had to shift their behavior due to their environment in the last six to eight weeks. So it's very insightful and it allows you to take actionable steps, you know, about, well, gosh, you know, two thirds of our team is, is kind of maxed out right now. Maybe we should launch this initiative next quarter instead of this quarter. That's fantastic. I love that. I love that you have, you know, a real tool that leaders can actually put their fingers on and actually see, as you said before, the progress or see the end results of it after they've actually put it into place. There's nothing like being able to take a team through uh, a particular engagement and actually be able to see its effectiveness. Right. So that's fantastic. So we have a lot of, you know, folks on the, on the, in our audience that are leaders of teams, leaders of organizations, you know, they sit in senior leadership and oversee a lot of mechanics. I like to say, around process or around programs, if there was one tip, you know, that's an absolute that you've seen time and time again, really be a game changer for um, leaders or organizations when it comes to behavior and managing the behavior or improving the behavior, what would you say that one tip is and one tool they could use? I think it's just simple. I think it's taking the time to really understand, you know, what does, what makes that person tick. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, there's uh, part of the instrument that we utilize, there's a motivators worksheet. And so there's 20 words, Fran, that are listed based on that person's algorithms that were built into their results, right? How they responded. And so best practice is for a leader to sit down. Could be, you could do this in the recruiting um, process. You could do it when you're onboarding. You could do it at a performance review. Employees want to be known they and and they want to grow and some people are going to be more um verbose than others in sharing okay here's what my career aspirations are or i'm really struggling with this person on my team or you know i'm just not feeling challenged right um some behaviors you're not going to know that information until they're literally providing their two week notice right um and so if you can yeah move through and really have a converse, a great conversation best practices there's 20 of those motivators that are listed have a, have the individual pick their top 4 and then define them so for example praise and recognition might be on somebody's list the way that you define praise and recognition might be completely different than how i define it right so yeah. i can tell you this is what's important to me right um and this is what i'm looking for up from you as my leader but also, this is what I'm looking for from the organization. Mm-hmm. And so what, if you really are able to get to the core of, you know, how can you attract and retain, you know, top talent and continue to develop them, um, that's a game changer. Because when you have the right people in the right seats, as you as you well know, that leads to increased revenue, increased, you know, customer uh, net promoter scores increased profit. It's a game changer when you've got the right talent. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Something you said that really um, made me think was, you know, I was listening, I think it was Simon Sinek the other day, he was being interviewed about, you know, when is the best time to do an exit interview? And he, I think his opinion is an exit view. The worst time to do an exit interview is when people are exiting out your organization, because obviously- They're not going to give you the best feedback. They're not going to give you anything that you really can use because That's in many right. cases, are, their mind is already made up. He said the best time to do a, an exit interview, which I thought was amazing. So listen up, everybody, is three months after that person's accepted the job 
and they're really in it and they're really thriving because you can tell typically I can, I've hired yes. hundreds of people in my life. Um, you can tell within 90 days, I can really tell within 30 days. I can actually tell within three weeks, whether or not a person is going to live, thrive and right. love what they're doing, because if they love it, yes, then you're not going to have to micromanage, not going to have to remind them. They already have their own reason for getting up in the morning. So I thought that was a really interesting point is that, you know, all, you know, survey, as you mentioned before, and really uh, get their feedback, but get their feedback as early on as possible. So I'm going to shift gears a little bit as we're starting hey. to, to wind up our, our conversation. I want to talk a little bit about, you know, what you're looking at in 2023. I mean, KYT has been around, as you mentioned, for 20 years. You guys have done a, a full body of work and an amazing amount of work. I'm sure you've worked with some pretty championed organizations and are really proud of yes. that. So are, are there any passion projects that you have on the horizon coming up for you that you're most excited about as you look at 2023 and what's in store for KYT? Well, as an organization, I mean, we're always looking to, you know, continue to evolve. And as our company grows, you know, as you are well aware, Fran, as companies grow, they outgrow processes, right? They outgrow, you know, technology. So, you know, we're we're wanting to show up in the very best way that we can, uh, you know, for our organization. So we're investing in, you know, people, process, technology, um, just from a KYT standpoint. But as far as deliverables for our clients, I will tell you, we've really seen a growing momentum over the last probably 18 months to 24 months. Um, we're doing a lot of leadership development um, with, with our clients, uh, a lot of training. And so, uh, you know, our, our program is, is pretty robust. Um, it's a 10 month program. And so we're, you know, there's going to come a day that we're, we're literally doing leadership development training, you know, once or twice a day with different organizations. And wow. um, yeah, That's and, and so we, it's super exciting. And again, yeah. it, you know, we get excited and passionate about it because like, people leaders, they want to show up well. They want to be the best version of, of who they are as a leader. And um, sometimes, you know, people have been great individual contributors and they're thrown into a, a leadership role. And, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, whether it's an emerging leader, it's, you know, a C-level executive leader, um, or it's, you know, someone that's in, you know, midline uh, leadership. Um, you know, we're, we're bringing a lot of leadership development and we get excited about what we bring in from leadership development because it does incorporate the behavior piece. And um, there's components about, you know, resiliency and how to move through conflict and communication and change management, all the things as leaders that we need. But th there's that consistent, you know, theme of behavior and bringing that in and understanding as a leader how to coach, you know, with that. That is so, so valuable. You know, That's one of the things I think that was really lacking, unfortunately, that we saw quite a bit right. when COVID hit is that a lot of leaders, a lot of team um, leads were responsible for coaching and counseling right. their, their teams through mental health challenges or just their own state of well-being. And these folks did not have the training. They didn't have the, right. the understanding. They weren't even being able to coach themselves, let alone being able to coach their team members. So I think that's outstanding that Know Your Talents has a leadership development program going on this year. And if you are interested, folks, in finding out more about that, please Google Know Your Talent Leadership Development. Is that right, Christy? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So you can learn more about it because I think that would be fantastic um, for people to do. And I think it's absolutely needed. There was a there was a um an article uh that uh LinkedIn had earlier this month that talked about that employees want to, they don't think that their employers are investing enough in their training right. and development. And employers are there's another two million, two billion dollars, excuse me, in allocated dollars to training and development in 2023, even though we're seeing a retrenching in this recessionary market people are still realizing that there's a, a major need for training and development. So I think that's outstanding that you all are yeah. planning to do that because I think it's a it's a big need and you can't do enough. I think that leaders need, they need to be able to have the tools and the techniques to do that. And there's no, there. it's it's a sad assumption when we think that automatically somebody is promoted to a leadership position, that they have the tools and the strategies to be able to coach and, and consult with others. So hands down, I think that's right. phenomenal. I think you guys right. are doing that. Right, phenomenal. yeah. So yeah. one last thing I'd love to talk about as we kind of wind it around and, and close up, I'd love to hear your just opinion, um, your snapshot as we look out the next five years in terms of mm. you know, culture management. There's so much that's being said right now around DEI 
and culture right. engagement and employee engagement and, and talent management. You know, what is your, you've been in the game for 20 years, Christy, so you know this well. You know, what is your five-year projection in terms of where we're going in this industry and this market? And what would you like to see happen over the next five years? Yeah, gosh, that's a loaded question. So many things. And, and you know, it is it is the crux of what we bring in that know me, grow me, include me, inspire me. That is what employees, that's 20 years of work that tell us that's exactly what client, what employees are looking for. But I think, you know, what, what we would love to see, I think the organizations that really thrive, you know, financially um, are driving a great culture there. They are organizations that, you know, their senior team is talking about culture and their people, you know, human capital strategy, as much as they're talking about their business and financial strategy, right? Um, and so I'd love to see more of that, you know, um, and I'd love to see, um, you know, culture and just the core values and and what really matters to the organization, you know, being brought in. Uh, employees want to know that, um, and so, you know, bring that into your onboarding process, your um, performance review, your bonuses, your promotions, you know, a lot of companies that we work with, they, they tie those things, you know, um, you know, their senior level executives, a component of their, you know, bonus payout is tied to, you know, what's our employee, you know, net promoter score, right? Um, our employee satisfaction score, there's a, a small component that's tied to that. And then really, I, I think in order for companies to continue to thrive is to really understand what are some sub subcultures that are happening within your organization, you know, um, and, and really get your arms around it because it's happening, you know, um, and um, in every organization, I don't care the size, you know, so, you know, really take some time to map those subcultures and really understand, okay, how can we align with the overall, you know, core values and culture strategy of the business? And then even the overall strategy of our business, you know, the business strategy, you know, the strategy work that that we do, you know, we talk about really cascading that strategy down to every single employee, you know, and obviously, you know, different people have different line of sight to information that's available, but don't keep that strategy at the, you know, C-level executives, because guess what? That very entry-level person that is on the front lines with your customer, they need to understand where the company's going, where's my place in it, and why in the world am I continuing to get up day after day and come and work so hard, you know? Wow. They want to know, you know? That is powerful. So, that is powerful. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I, if you guys didn't catch that, she said, make sure you cross-match you know, cross-reference that what's happening in the subcultures of your organization to the mission and the vision of your organization. Be aware of that, being able to see that. I think that's phenomenal. We just got back from our annual corporate retreat and it was great, you know, as a CEO to be able to hear what's important to employees, yes. but also to be able to share with them, this is where the organization is going. Do you see yourself as a part of it? Where do you see yourself in that, you know, where do your own personal values align with the corporation's values and bring that together? Yes. You know, it's interesting with where things are heading now, you know, with the ongoing looming recession, some inflation, you know, we're seeing some companies retract, but there, there was an article, I think it was last year sometime. And it, it, I loved the content and the messaging because what, what it said was, Typically, training and development was considered kind of a nice to have, you know, in organizations. And they were citing, and we 100% agree with this, you know, training and development is, it's a growth strategy. And it absolutely needs to be part of an organization strategy. You know, and I think the natural response is to kind of shrink back a little bit. But as you mentioned, now more than ever, um, you know, employees, they want to understand, you know, what's the company's purpose? What's my purpose? And what's, what's that cross section? And what are you going to do to develop me? Oh and if you can answer those questions, that's money. <laughs> no, that's money. That is so powerful. I love that point, Christy. I absolutely love that. And I absolutely love this conversation. So is there anything that you would like to share with our audience that you did not have a chance to, or any question that you wish I had asked you that I didn't ask you as we wrap up and people learn a little bit more on Know Your Talents? 
No, I think we hit everything. I just thank you for the opportunity to, to dialogue with you. And I'm just such a, a fan of all the work that your organization is doing and all the great work that, that you are doing. So it was it really was a privilege to spend a little bit of time with you today. Well, I'm hoping it won't be the last time. I always say this starts a conversation and I think you guys are doing phenomenal work. So I'm going to leave the door open to have you back if that's all right with you. Oh, we would love it. Thank you. Absolutely. And thank you all for joining us today on The Optimized Workplace. I'm your host, Fran Dean Bishop. Remember, it's always many monumental movements that make the biggest difference in your future. Thanks again. Have a great day, everyone.